Hey guys and gals, it's Hannah. Welcome to another video. I'm really excited to do this video for you guys. It's probably going to be broken up into two parts. So we're going to the school of jangle pop today, which is one of my favorite subgenres of rock along with shoegaze and power pop, of course. I'm going to be providing a definition of jangle pop as well as discussing its origins and also providing a big list of bands that make up this wonderful magical genre. So don't be scared. Let's learn together. First of all, you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is jangle pop? Jangle pop is a subgenre of rock slash folk music that started in the 60s and then made a big comeback later on in the 80s. Sometimes it's referred to as guitar pop or college rock. There's also crossover with this genre. So you'll notice that a lot of bands I'm gonna be talking about can also be considered in the power pop realm. That's because a lot of the jangle pop bands also incorporate those sweet harmonies just as power pop did. The term jangle goes back to the song Mr. Tambourine Man, which was of course originally penned by Mr. Bob Dylan. There's the line in the song, in the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. We'll skip ahead to the birds version. You'll notice it's strikingly different and even in a different key. This brings me to what I'm gonna be talking about next. Okay, listen up. If you don't pay attention to anything else in this video, I want you to catch this. The most important element in jangle pop is that ringing, chiming guitar sound. It's that electric 12 string guitar, that beautiful Rickenbacker guitar. George Harrison from the Beatles made this guitar quite popular and you can hear it in the songs Ticket to Ride and A Hard Day's Night. Pete Townsend also played the Rickenbacker in the 60s. You skip ahead to the 70s. Very iconic cover here with Tom Petty playing that Rickenbacker. So it's, it's kind of my dream guitar. Maybe one day I'll get one, but it's, it's quite pricey. Jangle Pop has a very distinctive sound. The guitars play arpeggios. What does that mean, you ask? That means they play a chord one note at a time. So it's more precise than playing just bar chords or a standard chord, you know, where you just strum the chord. In a lot of cases, there's also a cheery tone to the music in Jangle Pop. Not in all cases, but overall, there is a cheery tone. To go back further, uh, bands like the Everly Brothers and the Searchers were some of the earliest influencers of Jangle Pop. However, I want to focus on the birds, of course. I'm not going to pull out my entire birds collection. It's over there. I've shown the birds in my videos countless times. I love the birds. Their influence is just monumental to this genre and just to rock music in general. So remember the birds, always remember the birds. Roger McGuinn of the birds really made that 12 string guitar sound a trademark of their music. He played a lot of banjo apparently, so he really had those arpeggios down. Let's move on to jangle pop bands that really define this genre. Now, I have a lot of ground to cover here. I have a big jangle pop collection. So keep in mind that there's no way I can cover every single jangle pop band. I'll be covering some of the most well-known groups as well as some more obscure bands. But yeah, there's just too many jangle pop groups out there for me to cover them all in one video. Now, this is going to be split up into two parts. So if I don't mention a band in this video, be patient. I will probably get to it in the next video. So let's jump in time to the 80s when bands were really incorporating Big Star, Badfinger, Beatles, Beach Boys, and Birds influences in their music, along with other musical styles as well, such as New Wave, Punk, Psych, Folk. It's really just a good blend of different subgenres of rock. I don't mean to confuse you by bringing up other genres, but yeah, there is crossover with this genre. Just remember that key ingredient, that jangly guitar sound. Let's talk about the most obvious jangle pop 80s band first, and that is R.E.M. R.E.M. formed in Athens, Georgia. When they emerged, their sound was fresh, right? You had punk for years and years, and then R.E.M. comes along with this alternative sound. Peter Buck is just one of my favorite guitarists. He is like a master of arpeggiating those chords, right? They went back to that bird sound 
in a way, but they sounded modern. So REM's first EP is right here called Chronic Town. Uh, if you haven't heard this, this is definitely worth getting. Uh, it was released, I believe, in 1981 or was recorded in 1981. Definitely check that out. And then their first single was Radio Free Europe, which appeared on Murmur. And their first two albums, Murmur and Reckoning, really capture that jangle pop sound. But you can hear it all throughout their material in the 80s. I just love, love, love R.E.M. So you need, you definitely need their 80s albums. I have more. Those are, these are just the ones I pulled out. Mitch Easter produced their early material. And you'll see him pop up later on in my video. He's very important um, to the Jangle Pop scene in the 80s as a whole. Anyways, R.E.M. is Jangle Pop 101. Let us continue. So let's move on to the Soft Boys. The Soft Boys formed in 1976 in Cambridge, England. And the Soft Boys feature one of my favorite artists ever, Robin Hitchcock. Now, I'll show you two albums from the Soft Boys. These are their only two full length albums. Can of Bees is their first one. It's good, but this is kind of foreshadowing of the masterpiece that is to come next, which is Underwater Moonlight. These are both Yep Rock reissues, really well done. Everything about this album is incredible. Kimberly Rue has some amazing guitar riffs on here, driving incredible bass lines from Matthew, I think it's Seligman. Anyway, he, he unfortunately just passed away, I believe from COVID uh, a week or two ago, which is very sad. You got the harmonies on here. And of course, Robin's very quirky oddball lyrics. Uh, you got Beach Boys, punk influences on here, along with some tasty jangle pop. So after the Soft Boys, Robin went solo, and he has quite the extensive solo career. He's still going, still kicking out great material. What I love about Robin Hitchcock is he can be serious as well as nonsensical and goofy all in the same song. Just, just fascinating to listen to him. Here's some other favorites uh, from Robin Hitchcock that I love. This is Fegmania. That's great stuff. And then we got Queen Elvis. Globe of Frogs. And then I have a CD box set, uh, which is called I Want to Go Backwards. I think this is probably pretty rare now, but it's got his first solo offering Black Snake Diamond Roll. And I Often Dream of Trains is also on here, which is, that's probably in my top three Robin Hitchcock albums. So very, very unique artist. Do yourself a favor and check out the Soft Boys and Robin Hitchcock. I think you will be quite pleased. Let's stick with British bands and move on to the Smiths. The Smiths formed in 1982 in Manchester, England. The Smiths had those ringing guitars and the melodic three minute pop songs. You got the strange collaborative team between Johnny Marr and Morrissey. So yeah, the guitars are very layered, almost shimmering. And then you have Morrissey's crooning voice on top of it all. It's a contrast that worked. Some of my favorites I have on vinyl, uh, Louder Than Bombs, which is just a collection of some singles. And then Queen is Dead, which I finally listened to this again uh, two nights ago. And I was like, man, it's been too long since I've listened to the Smiths. This is one of my favorites from them, as well as Strange Ways Here We Come, uh, which I also have on vinyl. Next, I want to talk about kind of an obscure band from London. They formed in 1978. This is the Barracudas. And this is their first album, Dropout, with the Barracudas. This is a reissue, um, I think the original has kind of a different cover on it and I'll kind of put it over to the right if I find that. This is a band that really combined some awesome 60s influences in their music. So you've got surf, garage, and jangle pop. They're like a cross between the Flame and Groovies and the Beach Boys if you can imagine that. This is a forgotten album. There's some quite dark songs on here but I, I do come back to this quite frequently, so check out the Barracudas. Oh Lord, now we're going to one of my favorite bands from this era, and it's a band I was introduced to by my friend Jess M on Instagram. He has sent me loads of great indie music. 
I want to bring up this band, The Close Lobsters. I have shown this before many times. This is their box set called Fire Station Towers. Wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me discuss kind of where and when they formed. So The Close Lobsters formed in 1985 in Paisley, Scotland. They were on that C86 compilation with the song Fire Station Towers, which now I can appropriately show this box set. Amazing guitar pop band. They have three full length albums. The one that I always come back to, it's it's a solid favorite, probably in my top 20 albums of all time, I would say, and that's Foxhead's Stock This Land. What a beauty of an album. It's kind of overproduced, yes, but it's gorgeous. There's just something about it. Um, I urge you to listen to them. And this box set is really something special. It comes with uh, an LP of their singles, as well as their second album, Headache Rhetoric. So I just treasure this box set. I guard it with my life. And then I also wanted to mention them because they have a brand new album out this year. I believe it was released in February. So I bought this and I'm not really going to try to pronounce all of that title right there. I do not like the cover art for this album. There's the back there. This is my favorite album of 2020 so far this year, okay? I was blown away by this thing. Uh, their first single was All Compasses Go Wild. When that was first released, I, I was listening to it nonstop, seriously. This is their first album in over 30 years. It's like they picked up where they last left off. So, Close Lobsters, very special band to me. <laughs> get some uh, CDs to show here too for the next band because their vinyl is very pricey right now. So I've had to resort to eBay uh, to find some of their CDs, which actually aren't that cheap either. The band I'm talking about is the Go-Betweens. Uh, so my first introduction, wait a minute, let me back up. Brian from Shamrock and Records, he has an awesome channel. Check him out, you guys. He, when I first joined the vinyl community two years ago, he mentioned that I should check out their album, Friends of Rachel Worth. So I sampled it. I was like, yes, this is amazing. Well, for some reason, I didn't really check out the rest of their catalog at that time. Um, it's really in the past few months that I've uh, gone through the rest of their discography and bought some of these CDs. Anyway, <laughs> I'm, I need to stay on track here, you guys. The Go-Betweens formed in 1977 in Brisbane, Australia. Their early, early stuff kind of reminds me of Echo and the Bunnymen. It's got kind of that post-punk feel to it. As time goes on, they really fine-tune that jangle pop sound. You got one of the best songwriting duos with Robert Forrester and Grant McClellan. I'm just in love with this band. It's, I'm really, um, yeah, I'm going through their back catalog right now and just enjoying everything I'm hearing. So... Here's a compilation you can check out. It's called Bella Vista Terrace, The Best of the Go-Betweens. It's a 14 track set right there. Bought all these on eBay. Then I have Spring Hill Fair. This is like their third or fourth album. I'll have to look again for sure, but this is a good one. This one has Bachelor Kisses and Man of Sand to Girl OC and Drain the Pool for You. So that one's pretty awesome. Probably their most well-known and highly regarded album is 16 Lovers Lane, right here. And I recently ordered the deluxe two CD set of this. I'm still waiting for it to come in the mail. Um, but the second CD apparently has some live stuff, some demos, some rarities. Uh, so I just fell in love with this album. Especially, I'm sure you guys have heard Streets of Your Town. That is an incredible melodic song. Dive for Your Memory is on here. Was there anything I could do? Uh, this is a masterpiece right here. The Go Betweens. I got tired, but not so blue to see the cracks in you. I got high. Right, moving on we are moving on to the Springfields 
Now, this is a recent release. Uh, not recent music, but as far as uh, collecting their singles and putting it on an album for us to enjoy. So the Springfields formed in 1985 in Illinois. Not to be confused with the other Springfields band from the 60s, okay? This is a different group. Before there was Velvet Crush, Rick Mank and Paul Chastain were in some other groups called Choo Choo Train, uh, Bag of Shells, and then the Springfields. Now I featured Velvet Crush in my first Power Pop video. Yeah, I have very high regard for Velvet Crush and anything related, so this is up there in my book. So this is a collection of their material from 1986 to 1991. It's their singles. There's a lot of choice covers on here. When I first heard She Swirls Around Me, I was like, what is this Jesus and Mary Chain? Because <laughs> that's what it kind of sounded like. I found this in Portland in March, which I still need to do my Portland record store video. I'm getting to that. Anyway, you have very jangly guitars on here. Uh, I Some harmonies. I love this collection right here. So the Springfields, check them out if you love Velvet Crush or Jangle Pop in general. All right, next we're gonna talk about Let's Active. Let's Active formed in 1981 in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I mentioned before that Mitch Easter produced R.E.M.'s early albums and just became a well-known producer of that era. Well, this is his band. I'm showing their early stuff because that's what I enjoy the most. This is their EP of Foot and this is their full-length album called Cypress. Great songwriting and production on here. Uh, I just love the simplicity of their music. The song Every Word Means No on here, on a foot. Oh, that's awesome. So they were a trio in the early days. Sarah Rom Weber, I think she just passed away a couple years ago, or maybe last year. Check these out from Let's Active. Ooh, one of my favorite bands, The Church. The Church are next. Let me just grab their albums here. The Church formed in 1980 in Sydney, Australia. I'm really moved by this band's music. They've had a profound effect on me. In fact, my introduction to them was Under the Milky Way, uh, The Best of the Church. Has 17 songs on it. This is just a stunning introduction to them, in my opinion, if you want to start listening and if you can find that. Their sound is very atmospheric dreamy, jangly. You have psychedelic touches in there for good measure. They have hooks and imagery in their songwriting, layered guitars, unbelievably consistent band. Some of their earlier stuff has that extra jangle. This is their first album. Unguarded Moment. Come on, you, you gotta have that one. Blurred Crusade. That's another amazing one. I thought I grabbed, no, nope, I didn't grab Heyday. I just listened, re-listened to Heyday the other day. Uh, I haven't been able to find this one on vinyl for some reason, but Tristesse, Columbus, Tantalized. Holy moly, this album, we need a reissue of this. Yeah, Blurred Crusade, Almost With You, When You Were Mine. There's some amazing songs on here, you guys. Most of you already know Starfish. That's a masterpiece as well. I'm almost with you. I can sense it way for me. I'm almost with you. Let's stick with Australia and go to the Stroppies. The Stroppies are a fairly new band. The members were all in different bands before they came together. Very influenced by the flying nun groups, such as the Clean, the Chills, the Bats, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. It has kind of a low key vibe. Um, yeah, they're just an indie jangle pop band. Not that well known. They have a new album out as of this month. I think I saw on Bandcamp. I'm going to have to give it a sample. But this is their second album. I think they have three total. Sometimes they have a dude singing. Sometimes a chick. It works. This is a great album. Whoosh. From the Stroppies. And this one's on white vinyl. Yeah. Let's go to another favorite. And that is Felt. Felt formed in 1979 in Birmingham, England. Um, Lawrence Hayward is the leader of the group. He actually just goes by Lawrence. He was apparently very obsessed with Tom Verlaine and television, which is pretty evident in their music. What an awesome influence, right? His voice has been compared to Lou Reed, and I definitely hear that when I listen to Felt. This band, when I hear them, it's like, oh yeah, there's no question this is Jangle Pop. I heard about them through Steve at Flipside CT. Uh, check his channel out too. He's very knowledgeable, um, especially about 
glam rock, punk. You learn stuff when you're in this vinyl community. You really do. So Felt's catalog has recently been reissued by Cherry Red Records. The reissues are not cheap. I ended up buying this reissue from them. It's Forever Breathes, The Lonely Word, originally released in 1986. So I really enjoy this album. The other Felt albums I have on vinyl are Ignite, The Seven Cannons, and this is actually the first thing on vinyl I found from Felt. It's a compilation called Go Mine Trash, Greatest Hits from the Top English Pop Eccentrics. And it just has like 10 tracks on it, but really, really dig their sound. They are masters of jangle pop, Felt. Are you still with me? Are you? I hope so. <laughs> I know this is a lot of ground to cover. That's why I'm splitting this into two videos. I wanna mention another new-ish jangle pop group called the eyelids and they're from portland oregon what's cool about the eyelids is that peter buck from rem has produced several of their albums i just ordered three of their cds because there's a 20 percent off sale uh going on now through may 8th i believe on their website and Bandcamp. um one of my facebook friends i've been corresponding with introduced me to them the eyelids are kind of a super group there's members of The Decemberist, Stephen Malcolmus and the Jicks, and Guided by Voices, so you really can't go wrong, especially when their stuff is also produced by Peter Buck. Just thought I'd bring them up. I'm waiting for those CDs. I can't wait to get them. Okay, to wrap this video up, I'm going to be talking about the Flying Nun label and a few of the key bands on that label. So Flying Nun was an indie label in New Zealand in the early 80s. I'm going to briefly talk about three bands, three important bands that were on that label. So I'm going to talk about The Clean, The Chills, and The Bats. There's many more, but I just wanted to kind of briefly talk about these groups. These groups aren't strictly jangle pop. They also incorporate like 60s garage, punk, alternative. I'm going to mention The Clean first. The Clean formed in Dunedin, New Zealand. I think I'm saying that right, please. Uh, 1978 is when they formed. Their music has that DIY feel. They definitely had pop hooks. They were kind of sloppy, but that's part of their charm and appeal. Very jagged guitars with distortion. They definitely had that edgy post-punk sound. I don't have, uh, I have anthology, but not on a proper format where I can show. I'll put a picture over here, over here of anthology killer early singles on there you guys really should check that out from the clean they have many other awesome releases too i just haven't gotten around to picking up their stuff on vinyl i would like to in the future let me grab some cds to show next because that's all i have of the bats the bats formed in 1982 in christchurch new zealand the basis from the clean robert scott is in the bats i'm just gonna read what allmusic.com uh, has on their website to sum them up and it's they had a fresh take on garagey folk that flirted with power pop so if you can imagine that sound that's the bats and daddy's highway this is their first album i recommend this i really should get a vinyl reissue of this but uh this is a really lovely album from them that's that's where you should start for sure i also have the law of things and Couch Master, which came out in 95. So very important flying nun band there with the bats. And lastly, I'm gonna mention the Chills. The Chills formed in the early 80s in Dunedin, New Zealand. They got signed to Flying Nun in 1982. Uh, Kaleidoscope World was my introduction to them. And it's just a collection of their early singles. I think it's on pink vinyl too. This reissue right here. It's a double LP. It's a gatefold. Charming music with the chills. And then if you want to check out more of their music, Submarine Bells. That's a very important album from them. And then one of their more recent ones, it's Silver Bullets from 2015. You got the melodies, you got the jangle. Perfect jangle pop. Okay, I'm going to stop here for now because, yeah, this video is going on uh, a little longer than I anticipated for part one. In part two, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Paisley Underground groups, as well as the Bangles, as well as some other obscure groups you may not have heard before. So if I didn't mention a key band here, just wait. 
just wait for part two, please. Don't get upset. Don't be whiny or uppity. I am doing a part two for Jangle Pop. I can't possibly cover every single band, but I'm doing my best. I'm showing what's in my collection. Let's get the conversation started. What do you guys think of Jangle Pop? Okay, you guys, I'm gonna stop it right here. So take care. See you next time. Thanks for watching my video. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.